Guys, welcome to my channel today. We are going to put together the Veribus trike today. So stick with me to the end and you'll find out how to put this thing together and how bad it was. All right, guys, as you can see, the box came in good shape. Both sides of it, excellent shape. Um, everything inside was well wrapped, bubble wrapped, foam, all kinds of stuff. Very well placed to keep it all nice and protected. The fenders were wrapped individually. Uh, that's the frame all wrapped up. The manual for this bike is all colored pictures, takes you through the whole thing, all the parts you should have. It's very well written. These are some of the smaller parts you have, pedals, brake, rotor, so on and so forth. Now you have your, your rims, your tires, your fenders. Uh, everything is pretty easy on this thing. It's just a matter of assembling it. The hardest part is this piece right here, and even that wasn't that terrible. So this is the bike, again, all wrapped up, very well protected, and uh, this is it unwrapped. So we're going to start on the bike here. First thing we're going to do is take this piece off that they put there to protect it from being squashed together. It holds it where it needs to be, and it did really well on this bike. This other piece slid right into it. I'm prepping it now to slide the piece in. So I'm not going by the instruction manual. I put enough of these together. I like to do it my way. So if you want to read the manual, they, it's a different way. They tell you to flip the bike over. This is the way I chose to do it. So I'm marrying this piece with the main frame, uh, putting the bolts through it. Like I said, this one slid right in. I did another bike that uh, I had to actually spread the frame because even though it had that same bar in it, somehow it got crushed. This one was, you know, excellent, went right together. Now I'm taking off the bolts off the axle here so that we can install the tires onto this thing. I call them tires, but the rim and tire. Um, taking the, the right hand side is the drive tire. This one here just basically spins. So I'm putting that one on first, and it's just a matter of sliding it on, making sure it's seated, and putting the washer on and the nut on it. And we're going to get the other side done. And again, this is your drive wheel, so there's a square side to that wheel that you have to get it into the right position. And now again, putting the washer and the nut on this side, and the two wheels are on it and now I'm putting it on jack stands so that this thing can be held up so that I can adjust the chain, the brake and everything else. The tires are free spinning. Like I said, I'm tightening, tightening up those two back bolts on those things, but I prefer to do it this way because I can adjust the bike um, very well by having it up at eye level and trying to get all the stuff working on it. Um, I believe the manual shows flipping the bike over to do this. Um, again, you can follow the manual. I did it my way um, because I have put together quite a few of these bikes. So uh, I'm actually adjusting the rotor right now so that it's not hitting the brake because um, it was slightly off a little bit and rubbing. And I still have to put the cable on this thing and totally adjust the brake. But I was just getting that rear end well lined up with everything, making sure that it wasn't rubbing on it. Um, now I'm going to put, this bike has the two chains on it, which is actually a really good idea because it puts less strain on the main chain because it's not quite as long. So they divided it by two chains, making the chains not work quite as hard. Um, the two individual chains are going to be a much better uh, way to drive this bike because of the length of the chain. Some of these trikes, you look at the chain and it's like, you know, it just huge. And when you hit a bump, the thing goes up and down. This chain is much better. So I'm, you know, pulling this chain, trying to pull the rear end out so that I can tighten these bolts. Now I am tightening the bolts because the chain is tight. I did not tighten those until I got that chain on there. So we got to get these four bolts tightened up and then we'll be able to move on from there. So again, you know, make making sure all four are tightened up. You could use a torque wrench on this. They do give torque specs. 
Um, I chose not to. Now, now I'm making sure everything's working. The chain's moving around and it looks pretty good. Making an adjustment on the um, sprocket on the back there. So that the sprocket can move too to line up with that chain that we just put on there. I'm checking the tension on the chain. And now that the back is done, so we're going to move up to the front and put the front wheel on this. And again, they have this piece in there to spread this frame apart to keep it so it's perfectly aligned when you go to put your tire on. It'll fit right on there. Um, I did not have problems with anything on this bike as far as being out of alignment. Uh, the rear derailleur um, did need some adjustment on it, but that's typical. Um, it, you know, they, they put the derailleur on and then it has to be adjusted accordingly when you connect your cables and everything. So that's, you know, probably the trickiest part if, if you're not used to adjusting derailleurs in, uh, you may end up with it at a bike shop or something. So right now I'm putting the uh, rotor onto this front wheel because the rotor was separate. If you remember, it was in the cart. And I am now tightening down all these bolts. And I do a cross pattern. I tighten one and then go to the opposite side so there's no uh, warping of that rotor. So I'm jumping from side to side, tightening it. And um, we're pretty much all tight now. So the next thing i got to do is get this thing ready to put the wheel on it. I loosened up the bolts, lined up the two lineup pins that are in it that will lock that into position so it doesn't move around when that motor takes off. So you got to get those nice and lined up and seat it in place, put the nuts up on it and get ready to tighten it up. So again, very easy. So far we haven't had anything hard. Uh, that back piece so far was the hardest piece and even that wasn't that bad. And of course, you know, I'm cutting out some video here, so it's probably moving along faster than than it would if you did it. So it did take me a good uh, two hours to assemble the whole bike and adjust everything. So I'm showing you the, this goes in one way. There's two arrows on the side of that. You line up the arrows and push it together. Now I'm straightening the cable out on it. And now we're going to put the front brake on because the front brake did not come on it. Very simple though. Two bolts to put this in. And we do have a bunch of adjustments once we get that going. But the two bolts are in there now. We're going to tighten it down. And we will move to the other adjustment on it, which will be from side to side. So I'm making sure that cable goes all the way down. It does. It's spinning freely. And this is the side to side and it's nice and tight now. So the best thing when you go to do this is you tighten that brake up. You just spin that lever up, line it up and then tighten them. It, it, again, it'll take some adjustment um, to do it. Now I'm trying to put the handlebars up where they should be roughly so that I can move that cable. Um, down to the brake because I do want to put that cable onto the brake. So that's why I'm making sure that the cables are all seated in the brake levers. And um, as you can see, that one's kind of hanging. So I got to go back and push it in there and pull it through, get it down, making sure it's in the lever properly. And now you tighten your cable down on that. And now I'm checking to see if the brake's functioning. And it's clearing and that one's all set. So now we're going to move to the back brake. We're going to do exactly the same thing. So I've got to get the cable through the hole here. And we also have to make sure that the sleeve on the outside of the cable is totally into it. And not off to the side because that can happen sometimes. And then you'll have to readjust the whole thing. So... Cable's in now, and uh, we're checking the clearance on it, making sure it works, and piece of cake. So again, ch checking the clearance on it. Everything looks good. Now we are going to adjust the derailleur. So the cable um, is all set on that, but you do have to do adjustments to it. 
I have had to put the cables on before, but again, the cable came on that. It wasn't like I had to put that on. The derailleur was all on the bike. Uh, I have done some very similar to this and the derailleur wasn't. So right now I am adjusting that derailleur, making sure that it shifts from first all the way up to seventh gear. And I'm going through the motions. There's two screws on it. There's a high, an H screw and a low screw. The low screw is for your lower gears and the high screw is for your higher gears. And that is to stop it from moving over that sprocket. Um, and you adjust it with that the, the cable turn uh, to get it to shift right. So we're putting the, um, the chain guide on now, very simple, two screws. Now we're putting the pedals on the bike. Like I said, this it's very simple what you have to do to this bike, but uh, it is time consuming and you do have to have the ability to work with your hands. And not all, everybody has that, you know. I don't work well with my brain, but I work really well with my hands. So other people work very well with their brains and just don't have it in their hands. So you may have to, you know, find a neighbor or um, somebody that can do it or maybe a bike shop. You'll have to pay them to put this bike together. So we're putting the front fender on. You want to have that uh, uh, tab in the front of the fork, not the rear of the fork. I'm putting the uh, bracket on the back of the fender here and those will spin up and connect to the forks as you will see in a minute. And I had taken two of the screws out of that thing because the screws are in it. The screws are pretty much there so that uh, you don't have to go really looking for screws. I'm, again, this bike was very well done so that you can put it together easily. Um, you do have to put the light on now before you put that bolt through. So that's what we're doing here. And when you go to, to adjust these things, it's a pain in the neck. Right now I'm holding the screwdriver where it stays so the light doesn't keep turning and I tighten it with the wrench. Now I'm pulling this, these brackets down to pull this fender down into alignment so that it looks better with the bike. I'm very finicky about how the fenders look and stuff. So now these are the rear fenders. This came with a bracket that was all welded together. So it's a matter of just putting the screws in it. I've done another bike similar to this and there were three individual brackets. This was much easier. It was uh, better designed. Um, there's a reflector you have to put on this thing. One screw piece of cake. Now these fenders drop into position here. And there's two bolts you have to put through it. And it's really easy. Um, the hardest thing is trying to get these things to line up. You have to, you know, try to judge how it is to the tire. And then bend the um, metal. When the, I'm actually bending the metal now to make the bracket sit center over the tire. Again, you don't have to do that. I'm just super critical about stupid little things like that. I like things perfect. Here it is on there. It looks nice and, you know, beautiful. Move on to the basket now. And this basket came, it's assembled but folded down. So you undo it and you slide these pins in. It's really simple to assemble this basket. I've done harder baskets before. This one was really a piece of cake. So you put these brackets in with the, with the bolts now so that it goes across the uh, the basket and holds it down. Uh, I did end up readjusting this later on because I realized that it needed to go back farther because the back of my feet, when I pedaled, would hit the basket. So you consider that when you put it together and judge where your foot will be and move it back a little. I had it pretty much up against that seat post when I first put it on, and it's not the place to put it. Drop it back about another inch, and you'll be fine. First time I took it out again, I hit with the back of my feet and went, oh, I gotta move that. So there's a seat going in, piece of cake drops in there, and uh, you just turn this thing uh, to tighten that thing up, and then you can flip it out of the way. So again, piece of cake, I'm adjusting the handlebars now, putting that collar down. 
Um, that does come separately, so you slide that collar in. The handlebars come all together. So now, you know, it's up to the height that I want it, but I'm going to adjust the handlebars to the angle that I want. The last thing we're going to do to this bike is we're going to put air in the tires. And I believe the air pressure on these tires were 50 pounds, but double check on your tire to make sure. All right, guys, the bike is all assembled. It really wasn't that bad. They make it relatively easy by having everything pretty much prepped and ready to go for you. It's just a matter of assembly. The hardest thing about this bike, again, is probably adjusting the brakes and adjusting the derailleur. Um, if you felt that that was something you couldn't do, hey, I, you know, put the bike together yourself, make an appointment at a bike shop to have the derailleur and the brakes adjusted. Probably wouldn't cost you very much money to do that. So that's always an option. The other option is you could have a bike shop put it together, or maybe you got that neighbor down the road, or your son wants to do it, or, you know, explore the possibilities before you buy it. You should have that answer, but it's worth buying this bike. I've already been out on it. Uh, I will be doing a ride video so you guys can see it. We're going to do a review of the bike. We're going to go over the components on it. And uh, I'll explain that. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do hit that like and subscribe button. And thanks for watching, guys.